Good evening, everyone. Time for another Bitcoin report. Well, I was hoping to catch a uh, breakout into new highs and get that wonderful all-time high there that we see on uh, Bitcoinity, but uh, we seem to have pulled back. We we did break out into new highs. I was expecting sometime this weekend that we would break through the 150 price. You can see that we've run all the way to. Well, let's go over to. Uh, well, that's interesting. We're showing 173 over at Clark Moody. It's possible that we have a uh, a lag going on here at Bitcoinity. So we'll do a refresh, and uh, when there is a lag, they'll they'll put it down here, and I'll show them Mt. Gox lag. So we may have a lag here, and they're they're not quite lining up. But anyway, it looks like we hit 173 here, and uh, if we go out to the chart you can see the uh, point that I predicted we would break through here uh, as we were approaching that ceiling that we had at about 145 uh, you can see that the behavior was very similar to what I predicted it would be that uh, once the resistance was broken uh, then we'd get uh, a very very strong breakout uh, that's what we saw uh, maybe not quite the percentage run that we've had in the past, but uh, still a very, very strong run. So if we go all, all the way out to the weekly, you can see we are hockey stick time now. And uh, it's uh, virtually straight up. Now we know that uh, it's impossible to uh, continue at a pace that's parabolic because that means infinite price in zero time. But the only question is, when does it end? And uh, I pretty much, for the most part, have uh, transitioned out of Bitcoins. I do have some Bitcoins left that I'm never going to sell locked in a wallet. But uh, I've flipped over to a lot of the alt cryptocurrencies. And uh, let's see if we can go over to Bitcoin and get that all-time high signal. Uh, looks like we've got a Mt. Gox lag going here. So... Uh, but as I was saying, uh, I've taken quite a bit of Bitcoin profits, except for a wallet that I have locked away uh, that I don't intend to touch no matter where the price goes. But uh, it is parabolic. It's very, very exciting. Uh, now, the thought I had this afternoon when uh, I was reading, and we're going to get to uh, a lot of the comments on the message board, Zero Hedge and others, where a lot of the myths are being propagated. You get a lot of tulip bulb comments. Uh, there we go. There's our all-time high. Uh, so 173.63, that's an all-time high. We're hitting that right now. And so a lot of these comments are, well, this is a tulip bulb thing. And, and I wanted to address that tulip bulb thing here before I get to the myths, uh, because that's very important. For those of you who don't know the history of it, there was the tulip bulb craze in Holland. Uh, where you had this uh, just uh, parabolic market in tulip bulbs and uh, it just went crazy. It became a uh, insane crowd phenomenon, uh, the madness of crowds. Of course, the whole thing collapsed and went to nothing because ultimately what's, <laughs> what is a tulip bulb worth? I think they were importing tulip bulbs from all over the world. But uh, again, it's just a tulip bulb. Doesn't have that much value, really doesn't... Uh, con it's not really an investment. It can't really be considered to be money. Uh, so, and uh, there was a lot of debt, just like the South Sea bubble and others. So, I actually don't think that that is what's going on here with the Bitcoin. Believe it or not, I don't think these people that are piling into Mt. Gox, and I think that's what's creating this uh, rise that we're seeing right now, is the lag of the people that want to get their hands on a Bitcoin. Maybe a lot of these people. If you look at actually the numbers going through. You can see them over here. Uh, you can see the size of the trades, and that was the next thing I wanted to address. But uh, the numbers going through, uh, there a lot of them are not really large. Some of them are one Bitcoin. There was 100 Bitcoins, but a lot of them are a fraction of a Bitcoin. So I think a lot of these people are just people who like to get their hands on a Bitcoin and uh, just get involved. Uh, I don't think these are people who are planning on buying something and selling it to the greater fool. I really, I just can't tell you why I think that, but I just have that feeling. I think these are just people who think, hey, there this, there may really be something here. This may be 
a world changing thing uh, like the internet was when it first came out so that's what I think is behind that but anyway I want to talk a little bit about what we talked about last night about Mount Gox now I want to point out to you here uh, if you look at the depth uh, if you go down here to the bottom, you can see that we've got about 39,000, we'll just call it 40,000 Bitcoins that are offered here on Mt. Gox. And uh, you can see the bid is for as much as 100 and 168,000, but that goes all the way down to 10 bucks. But uh, there's definitely a lot of demand uh, compared to the supply. But I wanted to take you over to uh, BTC-E briefly and show you that because we were talking about the uh, difference between the exchanges and actually when we go over here this is the Bitcoin versus US dollar we look at it there's actually 12,946 bitcoins for sale there and there's two hundred and thirty nine thousand dollars so that's that's no chump change and uh, the next big one of course is going to be well the Russian ruble there's only there's only about uh, 400 bitcoins for sale there Bitcoins for euros, there's only 18 Bitcoins, so there's nothing going over there. But we go over to Litecoins for Bitcoins. Uh, we've got about uh, nearly 6,000 Bitcoins bidding on Litecoin, so add that to our figure that we had over there. You add all these together with the name coin, the PP coin, the TRC coin, the NVC coin, etc. You get about 20,000 Bitcoins on this exchange. So that is surprisingly... Uh, large. That's actually half the size of Mt. Gox. So it appears that BTC-E is already in the running uh, to compete with Mt. Gox. Very, it's going to be very interesting because that's a Russian exchange. Uh, will there be a Chinese exchange? And how is that going to impact uh, FinCEN regulations? But I mentioned that I wanted to get into the myths I've been dealing with the message boards before I do that I want to take you over the channel here remember we do have forums connected here I have a lot of new listers because they listen to my silver channel and they're starting to get interested in bitcoins they're asking a lot of questions about how to do things I just don't have the time to answer a lot of them so if uh, a lot of you who are sophisticated in uh, the bitcoin go over there and sign up and and help uh, help some new people out who are trying to figure out how to do this so let's get over to the myths I really uh, I'm addressing these uh, this is Bitcoin uh, dot IT this is the wiki uh, it, it, this is out there for anybody to read and uh, it may seem tedious and tiresome to you but I'm gonna sit here and read this to you because I have to counter these arguments every single day when I'm talking on message boards when I'm answering comments when I'm dealing with these myths and FUD that come up time and time and time again I'm mostly gonna read these but then I'm gonna comment on a few too because a lot of these have been solved even better than what is talked about here so let's just jump right in Bitcoin is just like all other digital currencies nothing new nearly all other di digital currencies are centrally controlled this means that they can be printed at the subjective whims of the controllers they can be destroyed by attacking the central point of control arbitrary rules can be imposed upon their users by the controllers being decentralized Bitcoin solves all of these problems so I think most of you know that one Bitcoins don't solve any problems that fiat currency and or gold doesn't solve unlike gold bitcoins are easy to transfer easy to secure easy to verify and easy to granulate for those of you who don't know that's divisible down to uh, the eight digits unlike fiat currencies bitcoins are predictable and limited in supply not controlled by a central authority such as the United States Federal Reserve the entity that is currently destroying the earth with money printing and they're not debt based unlike electronic fiat currency systems bitcoins are potentially anonymous that's right the blockchain is a public record but you can generate a new address for every transaction if you so choose and you can also go through a VPN or the Tor network so it is anonymous if you if you do the work to be anonymous freeze proof that's right 
The Bitcoin itself is freeze proof. Many of the exchanges have been frozen, but again, that's not the Bitcoin. There's a difference between the Bitcoin and the exchanges that Bitcoins are traded on. Faster to transfer. Yes, they're lightning fast and they're cheaper to transfer. Yes, in fact, the cost is zero if you're willing to wait long enough. Otherwise, you can add a little tip there. Bitcoin is backed by processing power. It is not correct to say that Bitcoin is backed by processing power. A currency being backed means that it is pegged to something else via a central party at a certain exchange rate, yet you cannot exchange bitcoins for the computing power that was used to create them. Bitcoin is in this sense not backed by anything. It is a currency in its own right. Just as gold is not backed by anything, the same applies to Bitcoin. The Bitcoin currency is created by a processing power and the integrity of the blockchain is protected by the existence of a network of powerful computing nodes from certain attacks. Bitcoins are worthless because they aren't backed by anything. One could argue that gold isn't backed by anything either. Bitcoins have properties resulting from the system's design that allows them to be subjectively valued by individuals. This valuation is demonstrated when individuals freely exchange for or with bitcoins. Please refer to the subjective theory of value. See also Bitcoin is backed by processing power myth. The value of bitcoins are based on how much electricity and computing power it takes to mine them. This statement is an attempt to apply to bitcoin the labor theory of value, which is generally accepted as false. Just because something takes X resources to create it does not mean that the resulting product will be worth X. It can be worth more or less depending on the utility thereof to its users. Uh, you can think of the latest green company uh, that the Obama dollars went into that went bankrupt today. In fact, the causality is the reverse of that. This applies to the labor theory of value in general. The cost to mine bitcoins is based on how much they are worth. If bitcoins go up in value, more people will mine because mining is profitable. Thus, difficulty will go up. Thus, the cost of mining will go up. The inverse happens if bitcoins go down in value. These effects balance out to cause mining to always cost an amount proportional to the value of bitcoins it produces. Bitcoins have no intrinsic value, unlike some other things. It is true that Bitcoins have no intrinsic value in the numismatic sense. In other words, value in any realm outside of being used as a medium of exchange. However, while some tangible commodities do have intrinsic value, that value is generally much less than its trading price. Consider, for example, that gold if it were not used as an inflation proof store of value but rather only for its industrial uses would certainly not be what it is worth today since the industrial requirements for gold are far smaller than the available supply thereof. Now that's not actually true. A lot of the industrial requirements for gold are ones that we use silver for and gold is actually very good for those. It's just that gold is so expensive because so many people are digging it up and burying it and hiding it in vaults and paying very large amounts of money to protect them, use it to protect themselves from insane central bankers who are printing currency like crazy that gold doesn't have the opportunity to be used in the uses that it, uh, it could be used in. But it is the most beautiful metal for jewelry and it is a fantastic electronic uh, conductor and is still used in a lot of uh, electronics. While historically intrinsic value as well as other attributes like divisibility, fungibility, scarcity, durability helped establish certain commodities as mediums of exchange, it is certainly not a prerequisite. While Bitcoin lacks intrinsic value in this sense, they make up for it in spades by possessing other qualities necessary to make it a good medium of exchange equal to or better than commodity money. Value is ultimately determined by what people are willing to trade for by supply and demand. And as you can see, uh, they're willing to pay 174.4 right now. Bitcoins are illegal because they're not legal tender. In March 2013, the U.S. Financial Crimes Enforcement Network issues a new set of guidelines on decentralized virtual currency clearly targeting Bitcoin. 
Under the new guidelines, a user of virtual currency is not a money services business, MSB, under FinCEN regulations, and therefore is not subject to MSB registration, reporting, and record keeping regulations. Miners, on the other hand, might need to register if they sell bitcoins for real currency or its equivalent. In general, there are a number of currencies in existence that are not official government-backed currencies. A currency is, after all, nothing more than a convenient unit of account. While national laws may vary from country to country, and you should certainly check the laws of your jurisdiction, in general, trading in any commodity, including digital currency like Bitcoin, Berkshires, game currencies like WoW Gold or Linden Dollars, is not illegal. Bitcoin is a form of domestic terrorism because it only harms the economic stability of the USA and its currency. That's a good one. According to the definition of terrorism in the United States, you need to do violent activities to be considered a terrorist for legal purposes. Recent off-the-cuff remarks by politicians have no basis in law or fact. Also, Bitcoin isn't domestic to the U.S. or any other country. It's a worldwide community, as can be seen on this map of Bitcoin notes. Now, I would note here that it's not just politicians. In fact, the prosecutor of the a Liberty Dollar, uh, the prosecutor of von Nothaus, uh, she said that it was an act of domestic terrorism. So... Uh, there have been prosecutors that have said things like that. Bitcoin will only enable tax evaders, which will lead to the eventual downfall of civilization. <laughs> Cash transactions hold the same level of anonymity, but are still taxed successfully. It is up to you to follow the applicable state laws in your home country or face the consequences. While it may be easy to transfer Bitcoins anonymously, spending them anonymously on tangibles is just as hard as spending on any other any other kind of money anonymously. Tax evaders are often caught because their lifestyle and assets are inconsistent with their reported income and not necessarily because government is able to follow their money. Bitcoins can be printed, minted by anyone and are therefore worthless. Bitcoins are not printed or minted. Instead, Blocks are computed by miners, and for their efforts, they are awarded a specific amount of bitcoins and transaction fees paid by others. See mining for more information on how this process works. Bitcoins are worthless because they're based on unproven cryptography. SHA-256 and ECDSA, which are used in Bitcoin, are well-known industry standard algorithms. SHA-256 is endorsed and used by the U.S. government and is standardized. FIPS 180-3 Secure Hash Standard. If you believe that these algorithms are untrustworthy, then you should not trust Bitcoin, credit card transactions, or any type of electronic bank transfer. Bitcoin has a sound basis in well-understood cryptography. Early adopters are unfairly rewarded. Early adopters are rewarded for taking the higher risk with their time and money. This argument is akin to saying that people who buy stock in a company's IPO are unfairly rewarded. This argument also depends on Bitcoin early adopters using Bitcoins to store rather than transfer value. The daily trade on exchanges as of January 2012 indicates that smaller transactions are becoming the norm, indicating trade rather than investment. In more pragmatic terms, fairness is an arbitrary concept that is improbable to be agreed upon by a large population. Establishing fairness is no goal of Bitcoin, as this would be impossible. By starting to mine or acquire Bitcoins today, you too can become an early adopter. 21 million coins isn't enough. It doesn't scale. One Bitcoin is divisible down to eight decimal places. There are really two comma zero nine 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 seven six nine oh zero 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 just over two quadrillion maximum possible atomic units in the bitcoin design the value of one btc represents 100 million of these in other words each is divisible by 10 to the eighth power as the value of the unit of one btc grows too large to be useful for day-to-day -day transactions people can start dealing in smaller units such as such as millibit coins, MB, MBTC, or micro bitcoins. Bitcoins are stored in wallets, files. Just copy the wallet file to get more coins. No, your wallet contains your secret keys giving you the rights to spend your bitcoins. Think of it like having bank details stored in a file. 
if you give your bank details or Bitcoin wallet to someone else that doesn't double the amount of money in your account. You can spend your money or they can spend your money, but not both. Lost coins can't be replaced and this is bad. Bitcoins are divisible to eight digits, so there being fewer Bitcoins remaining is not a problem for the currency itself. If you lose your coins, all other coins will go up in value a little. Consider it a donation to all other Bitcoin users. A related question is, why don't we have a mechanism to replace lost coins? The answer is that it is impossible to distinguish between a lost coin and one that is simply sitting unused in someone's wallet. It's a giant Ponzi scheme. In a Ponzi scheme, the founders persuade investors that they'll profit. Bitcoin does not make such a guarantee. There is no central entity, just individuals building an economy. A Ponzi scheme is a zero-sum game. In a Ponzi scheme, early adopters can only profit at the expense of late adopters, and the late adopters always lose. Bitcoin has an unexpected win-win outcome. Early and present adopters profit from the rise in value as Bitcoins become better understood and in turn demanded by the public at large. All adopters benefit from the usefulness of a reliable and widely accepted decentralized peer-to-peer -peer currency. Finite coins plus lost coins means a deflationary spiral. As deflationary forces may apply economic factors such as hoarding are offset by human factors that may lessen the chances that a deflationary spiral will occur. Now, I, I wanted to say a little bit more about that. Deflation, a deflationary spiral is really, uh, that's just a Keynesian thing. Uh, that has to do with uh, central banks printing up a whole bunch of money. And that's a big uh, FUD that central banks always use, is they're afraid of a deflationary spiral. Of course, we have eternal inflation. Uh, but, of course, uh, the Keynesian theory and explanation of deflation as being the bad bogeyman uh, is, of course, bogus. Deflation helps the little guy. It helps the wage earner. It causes his, it helps savers. It causes his wages and his savings to increase in value as he saves them. It helps retirees. It helps people, little people. Uh, deflation is a good thing. Uh, inflation is a bad thing. Bitcoin can't work because there's no way to control inflation. Inflation is simply a rise of prices over time, which is generally the result of the devaluing of a currency. This is a function of supply and demand. Given the fact that the supply of Bitcoins is fixed at a certain amount, unlike fiat money, the only way for inflation to get out of control is for demand to disappear. Temporary inflation is possible with a rapid adoption of fractional reserve banking, but will stabilize once a substantial number of the 21 million hard Bitcoins are stored as reserves by banks. Given the fact that Bitcoin is a distributed system of currency, if demand were to increase to almost nothing, the currency would be doomed anyway. The key point here is that Bitcoin as a currency can't be inflated by any single person or entity like a government, as there's no way to increase supply past a certain amount. Indeed, the most likely scenario as Bitcoin becomes more popular and demand increases is for the currency to increase in value or deflate until demand stabilizes. The Bitcoin community consists of anarchist, conspiracy, theorists, gold standard weenies. <laughs> The members of the community vary in their ideological stances. Anyone with enough computing power can take over the network. Confirmed. See weaknesses. That said, as the network grows, it becomes harder and harder for a single entity to do so. Already the Bitcoin network's computing power is quite ahead of the world's fastest supercomputers together. What an attacker can do once the net what an attacker can do once the network is taken over, is quite limited. Under no circumstances could an attacker create counterfeit coins, fake transactions, or take anybody else's money. An attacker's capabilities are limited to taking back their own money that they very recently spent and preventing other people's transactions from receiving confirmations. Such an attack would be very costly in resources, and for such meager benefits, there is little rational economic incentive to do such a thing. 
Furthermore, this attack scenario would only be feasible for as long as it was actively underway. As soon as the attack stopped, the network would resume normal operation. Bitcoin violates government regulations. There is no known governmental regulation which disallows the use of Bitcoin. Fractional reserve banking is not possible. It is possible. See the main article, Fractional Reserve Banking and Bitcoin. Point of sale with Bitcoins isn't possible because of the 10 minute wait for confirmation. Now, they get into, get into a long explanation of that. That's not actually true that it's 10 minutes and uh, you can also add a, a tip to your payment which will speed that up. Uh, one of the reasons I like Litecoins and I'm getting into them is because there is, they're very, very fast in confirmation. After 21 million coins are mined, no one will generate new blocks. When operating costs can't be covered by the block creation bounty, which will happen sometime before the total amount of BTC is reached, miners will earn some profit from transaction fees. However, unlike the block reward, there is no coupling between the transaction fees and the need for security. So there is less of a guarantee that the amount of mining being performed will be sufficient to maintain the network's security. Bitcoin has no built-in chargeback mechanism, and this isn't good. Why some people think this is bad. Chargebacks are useful for limiting fraud. The person handling your money has a responsibility to prevent fraud. If you buy something on eBay and the seller never ships it, PayPal takes funds from the seller's account and gives you back the money. This strengthens the eBay economy because people recognize that their risk is limited and are more willing to purchase items from risky sellers. Why it's actually a good thing. Bitcoin is designed such that your money is yours and yours alone. Allowing chargebacks implies that it is possible for another entity to take your money from you. You can have either total ownership rights of your money or fraud protection, but not both. That said, nothing inherent in the dollar or euro or any other currency is necessary for chargebacks to be possible and likewise nothing prevents the creation of paypal-like services denominated in bitcoin that provide chargebacks or fraud protection the statement the person handling your money has a responsibility to prevent fraud is still true the power has been shifted into your own hands fraud will always exist it's up to you to only send bitcoins to trusted entities. It is possible to trust an online identity without ever knowing their physical identity. See OTC Web of Trust. Quantum computers would break bitcoin security. While ECDSA is indeed not secure under quantum computing, quantum computers don't yet exist and probably won't for a while. The D-Wave system often written about in the press is even if all their claims are true, not a quantum computer of any kind that can be used for cryptography. Bitcoin security when used properly with a new address on each transaction depends on more than just ECDSA. Crypt cryptographic hashes are much stronger than ECDSA under QC. Bitcoin security was designed to be upgraded in a forward compatible way and could be upgraded if this were considered an imminent threat. See the implications of quantum computers. Bitcoin mining is a waste of energy and harmful for the ecology. No more so than the wastefulness of mining gold out of the ground, melting it down, shaping it into bars, putting it back underground again. Not to mention the building of big fancy buildings, the waste of energy printing and minting all the various fiat currencies, the transportation thereof in armored cars by no less than two security guards, for each could probably do, be doing something much more productive. As far as mediums of exchange go, Bitcoin is actually quite economical of resources compared to others. Economic argument one. Bitcoin mining is highly competitive, dynamic, almost a perfect market. Mining rigs can be set up and dismantled almost anywhere in the world with relative ease. Thus, market forces are constantly pushing mining activities to places and times where the marginal price of electricity is low or zero. These electricity products are cheap for a reason. Often, it's because the electricity is difficult or wasteful to transport, difficult to store, or because there is low demand and high supply. 
Using electricity in this way is a lot less wasteful than simply plugging a mining rig into the mains indiscriminately. For example, Iceland produces an excess of cheap electricity from renewable resources, but has no way of exporting electricity because of its remote location. It is conceivable that at some point in future, Bitcoin mining will only be profitable in places like Iceland and unprofitable in places like Central Europe, where electricity comes mostly from nuclear and fossil fuels. Market forces could even push mining into innovative solutions that have an effective electricity consumption of zero. Mining always produces heat equivalent to the energy consumed. For example, 1,000 watts of mining equipment produces the same amount of heat as a 1,000 watt heating element used in an electric space heater, hot tub, water heater, or similar appliance. Someone already in a willing position to incur the cost of electricity for its heat value alone could run mining equipment specifically designed to mine bitcoins while capturing and utilizing the heat produced without incurring any energy costs beyond what they, beyond what they already intend to spend on heating. Economic argument number two, when the environmental costs of mining are considered, they need to be weighed against the benefits if you question Bitcoin on the grounds that it consumes electricity, then you should ask these questions also. Will Bitcoin promote economic growth by freeing up trade? Will this speed up the rate of technological innovation? Will this lead to faster development of green technologies? Will Bitcoin enable new border crossing smart grid technologies? Dismissal of Bitcoin because of its cost while ignoring its benefits is a dishonest argument. In fact, any environmental argument of this type is dishonest, not just pertaining to Bitcoin. Along similar lines, it could be argued that wind turbines are bad for the environment because making the steel structures consumes energy. energy. Shopkeepers can't seriously set prices in Bitcoins because of the volatile exchange rate. Your assumption is that Bitcoins must be sold immediately to cover operating expenses. If the shopkeeper's back-end expenses were transacted in Bitcoins as well, then the exchange rate would be irrelevant. Large adoption of Bitcoin would make prices sticky. Future volatility is expected to decrease as the size and depth of the market grows. In the meantime, many merchants simply regularly pull the latest market rates from the exchanges and automatically update the prices on their websites. Also, you might be able to buy a put option in order to sell at a fixed rate for a given amount of time. This would protect you from drops in price and simplify your operations for that time period. And I wanted to add that I read today I'm not sure who it is, whether it's BitInstant or BitPay, but one of them has already solved this problem as well by simply converting the Bitcoin immediately into dollars as soon as the transaction occurs, and then the fluctuation is taken care of at that point. Like flus and e-gold, Bitcoin serve as opportunities for criminals and will be shut down. Visa, MasterCard, PayPal, and Cash all serve as opportunities for criminals as well, but society keeps them around due to their recognized net benefit. Hopefully, Bitcoin will grow to the point where no single organization can disrupt the network or would be better served by helping it. Terrorists fly aircrafts into buildings, but the governments have not yet abolished consumer air travel. Obviously, the public good outweighs the possible bad in their opinion. Criminal law differs between jurisdictions. And I might point out, uh, as I have pointed out many times, the UN estimates that uh, money laundering uh, from the drug trafficking trade is uh, upwards of one trillion dollars a year uh, that's certainly not going through bitcoin uh, and uh, everybody knows the quip if you look at a dollar bill and uh, take it into the police lab you'll find traces of cocaine on every 20. so uh, it's not the bitcoin that's involved with the drugs bitcoins will be shut down by the government just like liberty dollars were Liberty Dollars started as a commercial venture to establish an alternative U.S. currency, including physical banknotes and coins backed by precious metals. This, in and of itself, is not illegal. They were prosecuted under counterfeiting laws because the silver coins allegedly resembled U.S. currency. Bitcoins do not resemble the currency of the U.S. or any other nation in any way, shape, or form. The word dollar is not attached to them in any way. The dollar symbol is not used in any way. Bitcoins have no representational similarity whatsoever to U.S. dollars. Of course, actually shutting down Liberty Dollars was as easy as arresting the head of the company and seizing the offices and the precious metals used as backing. The decentralized Bitcoin, with no leader, no servers, no office, and no tangible asset backing does not have the same 
vulnerability. Bitcoin is not decentralized because the developers can dictate the software's behavior. The Bitcoin protocol was originally defined by Bitcoin's inventor Satoshi Nakamoto and this protocol has now been widely accepted as the standard by the community of miners and users. Though the developers of the original Bitcoin client still exert influence over the Bitcoin community, their power to arbitrarily modify the protocol is very limited. Since the release of Bitcoin version dot three, changes to the protocol have been minor and always in agreement with the community consensus. Protocol modifications such as increasing the block award from 25 to 50 BTC are not compatible with clients already running in the network. If the developers were to release a new client that the majority of miners perceive as corrupt or in violation of the project's aims, that client would simply not catch on. A few, years, few users who do try it would find that their transactions would get rejected by the network. There are also other Bitcoin clients made by other developers that adhere to the Bitcoin protocol. As more developers create alternative clients, less power will lie in the developers of the original Bitcoin client. Bitcoin is a pyramid scheme. Bitcoin is nearly the opposite of a pyramid scheme in a mathematical sense because Bitcoins are alg alg algorithmically made scarce. No exponential benefit is derived from introducing new users to the use of it. There is a quantitative benefit in having additional interest or demand, but this is in no way exponential. Bitcoin was hacked. In the history of Bitcoin, there has never been an attack on the blockchain that resulted in stolen money from a confirmed output. Neither has there ever been a reported theft resulting directly from a vulnerability in the original Bitcoin client or a vulnerability in the protocol. Bitcoin is secured by standard cryptographic functions. These functions have been peer reviewed by cryptography experts and are considered unlikely to be breakable in the foreseeable future. It is safe to say that the currency itself has never been hacked. However, several major websites using the currency have been hacked, often resulting in high profile Bitcoin heists. These heists are misreported in some media as hacks on Bitcoin itself. An analogy. Just because someone stole U.S. dollars from a supermarket till doesn't mean the U.S. dollar as a currency has been hacked. Most Bitcoin thefts are the result of inadequate wallet security. In response to the wave of thefts in 2011 and 2012, the community has developed risk mitigating measures such as wallet encryption, support for multiple signatures, offline wallets, paper wallets, and hardware wallets. As these measures gain adoption by merchants and users, it is expected that the number of thefts will drop. So that's it. That is all the Bitcoin myths. That's actually not all of them. I've got a number of others that I've had to address, uh, but uh, we'll have to do that another time. So Bitcoin is continuing to rise. You can see we're getting new highs. Uh, for all I know, we may even go through $200 by tomorrow morning. And we'll talk to you next time.